Again, we've seen that with a partner before, where they're just rolling it back and forth to each other. Totally fine. Glove presentation drill. This is one of my favorites. Trevor Austin right here. He loves the glove flip. I'm totally okay with the glove flip, but it has to be early. He has to be able to show the pocket to the baseball so he can attack it. So I'm rolling this ball right when he gets to the first one, but his glove better be showing when he gets to that first ball. So again, it's just like that tee drill. Not only do I want to be able to hit the first ball off the tee, I want to be able to hit the third ball. Same thing when I'm talking about fielding. Not only do I want to catch the first one, I want to be able to catch the ball that's being rolled to me. Pick drill. Again, we're using a machine here. You can throw these. Three bags, we're working on picks and tags. Us at the college level, we're lucky. We have instant replay. So we're just going to, we can catch tag and get out of there. I encourage you guys to teach multiple different tags. The tag itself is great, especially at the high school level. So you can kind of mix that in here. So I'm throwing it or shooting in the machine in the same spot. He's just moving around, so he's working the different ones. And then on the last one, he's going to get that in-between hop, and he has to use his legs to move back to create the long hop. For our first baseman, we don't do anything. We take that last bag out, and then it just turns into picks for them. Again, we can throw this as well. Short fungo, or short machine in this case. Uh, one thing, so we had Ian Kensler uh, on campus earlier this year, and he talked about, and he said it way better than I ever did, he talked about walking to the baseball. Uh, I always talked about being under control, slow. Uh, walking to the baseball, I think, is the best cue that I've picked up in my coaching career, and, it, and that's, it's that simple. So as infielders, yes, we want to move our feet, but we want to be under control. Short fungos where we can do that. We're going to start straight up. And then they're going to move the forehands. And then back in. Short hop drill, so create your short hop. Now we're starting to combine not just the glove work, but the footwork as well. Trevor Austin, I can flip it really high up in the air, I can keep it lower, he's just gotta create a short hop with his feet. This drill too, another big cue that I like to use is get your eyes low. Think about bending more kind of, or Tipping the shoulders versus kind of getting low in your knees. I want to tip the shoulders to get low. We'll do it forehand and then we'll also do it on the backhand side. So these next couple, uh, you can change it up. You can have them tell you the hop. You can have them, you can direct them what hop they're going to catch. Uh, we do it in a bunch of different ways, mixing it up. So what I mean by that is, and you'll see here, uh, the first thing we did, he would tell me which hop he, uh, he caught. So did you get the short hop, did you get the long hop, did you get the in-between hop? As we moved through it, I directed him to say, hey, I want you to get the long hop. I want you to get the short hop here. Variations, uh, bare hand, all these, all those drills that we just went through, you can go bare hand, you can go paddle glove, that's that completely flat glove. You can go mini glove, mini baseballs. Uh, the C25 balls are over overweight, underweight uh, baseballs. Tennis balls or the soft flight balls, I really like as well. Those things will stay down. If you don't catch it in the right spot, they're gonna pop out. 
Uh, so the last thing we'll kind of get to after we went through our whole progression is our fungo routine. Now, obviously resources, what you have, maybe you only have one fungo guy, maybe you have two, maybe you have four, and you have, you come up with it. Um, whatever you want, you can go with it. Right here, we have two. We start infield in. So, with infield in, they have to create their hop. It's a little tougher, not as much space. It's like that uh, short fungo drill. You have to move your feet. The next thing we're gonna get into is come get them. So, when I first got into coaching, uh, I reached out to three colleges, so the University of Florida, Oregon State, and South Alabama. All three were in the top five in fielding for five straight years. The only thing they said in common was this was one of their drills, come get us. So you can do this by hitting it extremely hard or soft. From there, we're gonna get into throws the first. Usually during this time, I'm gonna yell out a color runner. So, if I yell out green, it means they have a fast runner. If I yell out red, it's slow. What I have found is if I don't say anything, they're not going to take it very serious. But once I start counting, hey, we got a green runner, all of a sudden they get into it, now it becomes a little bit of a competition for them. Then we're going to get into double plays. Another thing you can do, not just only on double plays, but also on the plays of the first. <coughs> you can say, match the clock. So what I mean by that is, hey, we're going four, two, five here. Match the clock. Don't beat it. I want you to start to build that internal clock. I want you to match it. Or, hey, we are gonna beat the clock here. We got a four, one, oh. Not too many people run a four, one, oh, but I wanna speed them up a little bit. Another one I really like is, hey, we got a slow runner. It's a four, four, match it. And they don't, they don't realize how much time actually a 4-4 is. Uh, here you can see we're practicing in our shift position. I know maybe at the high school level it might not be something you guys do too often, but if you do believe in maybe shading poolside or shading a little bit to the opposite side for whatever reason, I encourage you practice it. Otherwise, again, the first time they do it in game might not look so pretty. And then we're going to turn double plays in that shifted position. 